In its 41 years, Sailing Week has grown to be an event that now attracts 200 boats to compete over five days of racing, and all against a stunning Caribbean backdrop. The biggest individual fleet of boats in Antigua this year is the Swan Fleet. With more than 40 years of experience in the creation of luxury yachts, Nortor Swan is a worldwide symbol of prestige and sailing elegance. The boats ranging from the 30-foot Merca to the 70-foot Stay Calm make a dramatic sight as they sail around the coast of Antigua. But Sailing Week is about more than just sailing. It's an opportunity for owners of these yachts and members of Club Swan to meet up and have time with their fellow owners. People choose the Swan for the same reason, and these are they want the performance boat. They want uh, the boat that can sail against the top performing boat. So they want speed. At the same time, they want safety. They want boat that can cruise uh, and cross the Atlantic and go around the world. They also want a nice boat, a good-looking boat, a stylish boat. So it's a combination of style, performance and safety. And they come here because they feel equal. They want to stay together as well because the type of client we have, they share the same value. They love the sea. They usually are successful businessmen and they come here to relax and have a challenge outside the business world. People buying swan usually buy more than one swan and where they are here they stay for a long time. But uh, I like to see that the club is uh, very informal and is uh, of people that are passionate about the sea and the offshore racing and inshore racing and so on. Day three of the regatta sees a change to the previous two days of long reaches and downwind runs as the yachts race around the cans over two races. This change could prove difficult for some of the larger yachts that have dominated so far. Tuesday is usually a big day for Chippewa down in Antigua. Tuesday is always windward lure day, so it's a two race day. Uh, and we usually do quite well in windward lures. The boat likes to go straight downhill. Uh, it's an important day for us, this regatta, because we've, uh, uh, our first race was not great. Yesterday we went quite well. I think we're knotted up at the top. Um, so if we could do well and put two races behind us today, that would, that would really uh, put us in good shape going into the break day tomorrow. Today we've got our work cut out because windward lures straight up and down. First race happily is a little bit longer. We've got a long um, reach and a good kite run later. We don't have to drop and repack. Uh, a huge kite we have, which takes 30 minutes for 20 people to repack. So that's a killer in a race like Wimbledon Lewis. In a straight line with a bit of course to work at, we're fairly competitive, but when we start going around corners and a windward leeward course getting sails up and down, we don't expect to be able to compete with the smaller boats. It's just a question of scale and the time it takes to do things. The crew of Sajana have worked through the night to repair the damage caused by yesterday's incident with Lolita and are hoping to regain some of their lost points today. Yeah, we had a bad day yesterday. We, we won our race, but we had an incident with a boat in another class where uh, we went around the top mark. Chipe said, he said a spinnaker. We were going past him as a much faster boat. He didn't like it, decided to luff us, lost control, broached his boat, came in the side of us. There's no way we could avoid him. Went to protest and the protest committee decided that we were at fault for not keeping clear of him. So we got a lot of damage and we got to appeal the decision because it's quite a major um, setback for us and there are quite a lot of insurance implications as well. One, so to the start line of race number three as we join the performance cruiser division. Charisma has another great day, and this 57-foot Spanish boat leads the division after the two races, with Berenice lying in second spot. In racing three, Yanni takes another win, leading her division and lying in fourth place in the fleet.
In racing one, ICAP Leopard not only takes line honours today, but finally takes a win on corrected time in the first race of the day. In the multi-hull racing class, there's a new kid mixing it up with the big offshore racers. By virtue of two wins today, Cali Henix's Seacart 30 True Look has earned a tie atop the class rankings with Frank Yves Escoff's 50-foot Crepe Wahoo. The big 60-foot try Rajon Guadeloupe is a not-so-distant third. The gunboat fleet remains wide open after two different boats found the winner's circle today. Lickety split two and blast sharing the honours. The B fleet today raced up the west coast of the island in the Jolly Harbour race. There were some outstanding performances today and the following boats and skippers took top honours in their respective divisions in the day's lone race. David Cullen's J109 Pocket Rocket took line honours in the Performance Cruising 3. Hugh Bailey's Beneteau 456, Hugo B took Performance Cruising 4. Sasha Escoff took the win in Half Moon in the One Design International Dragon class. Sea Biscuit, Pat Nolan's Oceanus 44, took the win in Cruising 1. In the bare boat classes, there were wins for Luby, Arcadia's Southern Comfort, KHP Wazo, and KHP Fantask. Back to the A-Fleet and in racing two, Sajana takes line honours in the first race. But Stay Calm is the big winner of the day, taking both races on corrected time. Chippewa coming in third. <laughs> 